Well, here goes... Okay, here goes pretty much everything. If it doesn't work, I plummet to my demise. Wait, the door teleports you in? Huh, that's a clever design. Now this is nice. Spacious, colourful, stocked upon supplies. I'm gonna like it here. And I know just the right episode to talk about. A new environment, a new layout, a new outlook on the show. I'm ready to start the new year off with a bang. And I can't think of a better way to talk about the acceptance of change than this episode. Hello there my friends, I am the editor and welcome back to Cut and Print. Starting off the new year, we are taking a look at Castle Sweet Castle, an episode devoted to anyone going through the ways of change, such as myself. With a new channel and a new look, I need to break in the new features. Also, this is a response to pretty much anyone who commented on my DA page about my new look, stating, I don't like change! Let's hope this will give you all a bit more of a clear mind on the matter. So, let's begin. The episode starts off with a little animal care as Twilight and Fluttershy tend to their needs. Finishing off the tasks, Twilight is dismissed, but for some reason she's reluctant to go home. However, sidetracking that for a bit, there are just two points worth mentioning. Firstly, the one part about Fluttershy actually acknowledging that she's an animal. Aren't there more animals that need cleaning? I think you and I are the only ones left. I just find it interesting that she doesn't see herself as a superior sentient race l like most humans do. Then, if that's the case, does all of Equestria feel like this? Equality among species? Then again, this is Fluttershy, the one who cares about all living things, so it's only natural for her to consider all creatures as equal beings. Secondly... <laughs> I have nothing to say about that. It's just, everyone deserves to see that clip. Anyway, moving on. Shrove Tuesday comes along, that's the headcanon I'm going with, and Twilight seems... out of it. Turns out she's been helping out more than she really needs to with her friends, and causing a bit of a worry between them. Huh? I'm Pancake! I mean, awake! <laughs> Again, no joke, just funny clip. But it turns out that Twilight has been avoiding the castle itself. And straight away, this started touching up on a subject quite touching. See, all the way from season 1 through 4, Twilight has only ever known the Golden Oak Library as a place she can call home in Ponyville. And I'm saying Ponyville because where she was before in Canterlot, when she left there, she wasn't really all that heartbroken. I see that place as more of a study than where she lived. Also, having a strong message like this that early into the series would be just a little bit too pushy. Regardless though, Twilight doesn't feel at home because her home was taken away from her and she has no choice but to accept this new environment. Not what she's used to. This kind of reaction is called a transition. It's the process or a period of changes from one state or condition to another, such as something both adults and children have to deal with at some time in their lives. Let's look at this from a few scenarios here. Even if you can't think about this from a child's perspective, which the show is aimed for, this is easy for you to look at at an adult perspective as well. Especially the first transition, adulthood, where a child has to get used to the idea and then eventually experiencing the transition of becoming an adult in the wide world. They need to learn how to adapt by themselves, not always relying on someone all the time but instead they need to chart their own course in life. Not only that, but they also need to come to the realisation that their bodies will change and grow as they change, from who they once were, to the newer, more grown-up version of themselves. 
sometimes not even realizing that they are changing only through the eyes of others. Then we have moving environments. You've lived in a space for however long it's been when all of a sudden you have to move for whatever reason. Be it because of family, school, work, health, could be any of these reasons. And now the place you've gotten to know so well is soon not going to be your own anymore and you have to get used to another place all over again. Not only that, but in children's case, it can be the same situation, but something as simple as moving rooms in the house, changing from a cot to a big bed. There are so many differences that can come from this. Lastly, there is family changes. Now, this can be looked at in two ways. You have the first one where it is the acceptance of another person in life. Be you a child or an adult, there are many different ways to look at it. You could recently have a new sibling, making you the older offspring in the family, and thus can become jealous, upset, or even aggressive because of the changes made to what you've been used to. Another spectrum is the introduction of foster parents or step parents or siblings. They are not used to you, nor you them. Certain things will change because of different lifestyle, sharing what once belonged to you with others you're not familiar with, or getting used to the newer ways of how routines could be changed round. And lastly, there is the ever upsetting one of bereavement, the loss of something precious to you, be it the life of a loved one, or even the loss of something you treasure close to your heart, like your first toy, a special cup to drink from, Julia that has a significant meaning behind it. There are lots of reasons. All of this is coming to the point that we have gotten used to these things in our lives, that once they have been taken away, you feel slightly empty inside. Our regular routine has been disturbed thanks to this, and we sometimes forget how special something really is until we no longer have it, whether they're a living being or a simple object. It's the value on how much we treasure the stories and memories behind them. And that is what Twilight is going through. Adulthood, environmental, and family. All three of these play a big part in why Twilight doesn't want to go back in her castle. Her new role as a princess, so she has certain responsibilities, and even taking into consideration the cutie map. The new place where she lives since Terek exploded her old one. And the bereavement for losing something taken for granted as simple as being a place of living but was so precious because of the memories that were made there. Even how it affects others. Don't forget, Twilight has to take into consideration the lives of Spike and Aloysius, so even they're going through their own transitions. It just makes it all the more special that Twilight's friends go out of their way to make her place more homelike. That's an amazing and truly hard to fill concept right there. And sometimes in transitions, that's all you need. Good reassurance, the love and support of your friends and family, and the thoughts and considerations from everyone around you to let you know that no matter what, they are there to help you up when you are down. But as emotionally appealing as all of this is, I just find it hilarious that they all make the place more homelike according to how their own ways of life. And what's special to them, that's funny. I mean, the thought is there and their hearts are in the right place. Shame their brains aren't for the time being at least. However, in the end, it all comes into effect, with the end result being that the Golden Oak Library remains salvaged, brought back to the castle, and chains of crystals hang from the ceiling, each one imprinted with a loving memory Twilight had while she was here in Ponyville. I'm not entirely sure how this was possible, exactly. Are they picture frames? Did they pull some Harry Potter memory capture spell something? Either way, this is heartbreaking. And to finish it off, we have this one little bit of dialogue to truly let the message sink in. We were hoping that being able to look at your beautiful old memories would inspire you to make new ones. And the best part of it is, it's made from the roots of the Golden Oak Library, so you'll never forget where you came from. Simply beautiful. Overall, my friends, this episode really does hammer in the points that as long as you have the memories and remember the good times you had with whatever it was now lost to you, it will never be forgotten. Opening the door for you to make new memories with whatever life throws at you and whoever you are with. So with that, this episode gets a gold.
I actually teared up at the end of this episode first time because it reminded me of Archie the Dalmatian when I was a child. From the first moment I was brought into this world, me and Archie, a newborn puppy, were together. Not as a boy and his dog, but as brothers. And I've lost family members that truly meant the world to me. But when I lost Archie to cancer at 14, I lost half of my life along with it. To this day, he will still be my brother. I even kept his chew toy that me and him used to play with together on my desk to remind me of him. And we even have a memorial urn with his ashes inside it in our conservatory. His favourite place to be in the house other than with me. Thank you all for watching my friends. I can't fault this episode because it brings back so many memories of the past. And now I invite all of you to express your own ways you have come to dealing with your own transitions from what I've spoken about. Let me know. Express yourself to the world and let us all come together to remember the good times. Until next time, my friends, I'm the editor, and cut, that's a wrap.